welcome back to my channel. I am Tony. in case you're new here. Um, hi, where have you been? <laughs> I'm back with another play party review. Today I'm going to be re re Ugh. okay. Today I am going to be reviewing Skirt Club. I'm really sorry if you keep hearing meows. I got a cat recently, I adopted her. And she is a bit of an attention whore. She is obsessed with me and just always wants to be all over me. And I tried, I really tried to have her in the room whilst I was recording this video, but it didn't really work because she was just trying to eat everything and then she's trying to fight me and I was ready to throw hands, she was ready to throw paws. I was like, you know what, this is not conducive to our relationship. So I kicked her out. And so she's meowing in the background and I'll probably show her at the end when everything is fully dusted and recorded. Anyways, so today's episode is going to be another play party review from your resident pester, me. I'm reviewing Skirt Club. Skirt Club is a female community for bi curious women. Um, they're global as well. I've been to a few different parties, a smaller party and a bigger party. And finally, you know what, let me actually start, let me start from the beginning. How did I hear about Skirt Club? Because Skirt Club was actually one of the first female only play parties I actually heard of. So I was working at this event. This is at a, it's at a mansion in London and they host various different events. They, they host play parties, they host regular parties. So the, I was told that, you know, this is gonna be a party for just women. So all the staff have to be women. I was like, okay, cool. That sounds fun. That's all right, I'm cool with that. I show up, I'm there, I'm looking around. Nothing was amiss when I arrived, I thought it was just a regular party and I was working in the bar. So I'm there on the bar and as the night, and people are arriving, they're all dressed up really nicely. I think the theme was wild side or jungle or something like that. People were in animal print, it was, cu it was cute, it was nice. But then as the night went on, clothes started to disappear and I was like, huh? Did I miss the memo? Is, what is happening here? Is this a, is this a play party? and um, a few of the hostesses were talking to me throughout the night as well and they told me about Skirt Club. Skirt Club was this femme and non-binary sort of community for people who are queer, who are bi-curious and I was like whoa this is revolutionary and by revolution I mean brand new information to me because clearly it wasn't revolutionary. They've been around for years. Skirt Club is not a new thing, it had been around for years but this was the first time I've ever heard about it. I was like, why, why, this is amazing. Needless to say, after my shift ended, I signed right up because who doesn't want to be around a bunch of women? I certainly do, I definitely want to be. The sign up process was fairly easy. They have a website, you just signed up on there, put in some information and they vet you. Just make sure that you are, you are who you say you are. They have a forum on there as well so you can get to know the community, which I thought was really cool because it can be quite daunting entering into those kind of spaces without really knowing anyone. So I thought that was a nice little touch. So when you do sign up, you do have to pay like a sign up fee and that goes towards your first party, which made sense because you're investing in this party and they wanna make sure that you're actually serious about it and they don't just let anyone in because you know, it's meant to be a safe space for people who are bi-curious and potentially they might not even be out yet. So they wanna make sure that people they let into the space, they are very serious, they are who they are and they do actually want to come to these parties because you d they don't really want lurkers on the site which is fair enough because people post some very saucy naughty pictures on there myself included they don't just do play parties which i think is really cool they do boozy brunches they have like a over 40s brunches i think that's how that they do they also have just regular brunches they have they have smaller intimate parties they have bigger parties they also do workshops as well i'm pretty sure they have a beginner's dom workshop which I have yet to go to but it's definitely on my list to actually go to. Let's talk more about Skirt Club itself. So from my first impression of going to these parties and also when I was working there as well it was mostly made up of bi-curious women. You know women who had husbands and kids and boyfriends at home. I didn't really meet a lot of lesbians when I was working in the bar and then that was also the same when I went to the smaller parties and then also the bigger party later on there it was mostly i think it's because skirt club is marketed towards you know by curious bisexual women and um and there was a and there was an article that I actually read by vice that that called skirt club the must go to party for the casually bisexual modern women so for me it was a lot to sort of grapple with 
in that sort of space because it took me so long to feel comfortable in my queerness and me um, liking women as well that being around women who it, it was a basically it was a lot for me to process because it felt like I was still sort of in the closet or feel like I'm still in the closet ish I don't know because you know these women they had they had lives outside of these spaces it's kind of like Vegas you know like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas what happens in Skirt Club stays in Skirt Club and it's still and it felt like a bit of oppressing and suppressing parts of myself because as soon as we left it was as if you know that didn't exist I didn't exist but of course that's just that's just me and me and my process and um and my processing of things I feel like it is really nice that there is a space for people who are curious about who what who want a safe space to explore their desires and you know to explore it without the male gaze I think that is incredibly important but I think also there is a lot to also consider um for yourself as well like if for me if especially if you're like me who has who has struggled with identity in their part in the past and you know if you haven't done as much work on it it could be a bit of a difficult space to be in I think so like I said before skirt club is a membership party you have different tiers of membership so once you know once you've paid that initial sign up fee that goes towards your first event or you can use it towards buying the membership you have your so the membership is in tiers the first one like the basic free one the second one you pay and you get certain benefits you get access to all the events and blah blah and then the highest tier one you get um access to all the events and then priority i don't really know <laughs> i can't tell you but I, i've got the middle one where and it's and it's fairly cheap i think it's quite cheap so i've got the seductress membership which is like 50 pounds for the whole year or five pounds per month and that's not too bad you can spread it across months or you can just do it all in one go but it's important to know that even though you have membership, you do still have to pay for the events as well. There's a lot included. You get a welcome drink on arrival and you know you have access to this great, usually quite great spaces. And I think it's honestly worth the money. And also if you're, and I also think that for discretion as well, it's worth the money. Like if you don't want to be out there in a free for all where anyone could sort of come to these events, I think, the membership paying for the membership is worth it the first ever party i went to for skirt club was a very intimate party i think there was like 15 people and i actually really enjoyed it i thought that i i think i actually prefer the smaller intimate parties i love the big ones don't get me wrong love the big ones but i actually surprisingly enjoyed the smaller intimate party because i could actually get to know people and it was just cozy it's a nice cozy vibe it was hosted by Seren Sin. She's the main one who kind of hosts the London events. I think she's the only one that hosts them. And she has like other hostesses there. It was hosted at her place, which is like beneath the barbican, which is really great. Massive dungeon and multiple levels. It was, it really added to the experience. And then whilst I was there as well, I got a full BDSM. No, I got a full Dom session from her. And it was very tantalizing, very, very tantalizing. She knows what she's doing. It was honestly quite great. It was honestly a really amazing first experience. The dress code for that night, I can't quite remember, but to be honest, they do have, each event does have a theme and um, you can dress, you can dress to the theme, but you can also just dress in what makes you feel sexy, which is, you know, the most paramount thing. You don't wanna, I don't feel like you're forced to always match the theme of the night. And there's no pressure to either, especially if you don't have something to wear. It's just whatever makes you feel sexy and glorious and opulent and just luxurious. That's what they're trying to sell, really. They're, they're selling opulence and luxury. Like, this is not just your regular play party. This is a luxury play party. This is a decadent, female-only space that is just full of power and magnetism. It's just, yeah, you wear whatever you, you wear, whatever makes you feel sexy. That first uh, play party I went to, the smaller one, I think the tickets were around like 45. Turns out I actually paid 24 pounds. I'm not really sure where 45 came from. Included drinks the whole night. So it wasn't just a welcome drink. It was like fridge flow and Prosecco. We played a number of games to kind of get to know each other. We played spin the bottle. We also played spin or, sp no, kiss or spank. So it's kind of like spin the bottle, but when you land on someone, you choose to either kiss the person who spun it or get a spank. And I thought that was a cute little game to kind of lighten the mood and sort of get everyone sort of um 
lubricated and feeling more easy because in a smaller intimate party it can be a little bit overwhelming because you can't really hide <laughs> you can't hide and you have to kind of get to and you have to talk to people otherwise you're just there in a corner like mr mrs lonesome and it's not that fun so i think that sarah and the other host hostess she did a really good job in facilitating conversations and making sure people felt really comfortable which was amazing it was a five to six hour party it started at a reasonable time and ended very reasonably so i didn't get home too late especially because most of the parties that they have they're usually in the week they're, they're during the week i think the first one i went to was on a wednesday and then the bigger party i went to was on a thursday so i think they both finished at midnight and the one that i worked at was a bigger one and i think that was on the weekend and that finished at 2 a.m i'm i'm very happy with that because it means i get to go home and sleep at a reasonable hour and not feel so tired the next day the second party i went to was red light and that is why i'm wearing red actually no i was just wearing red today and i, and I realized as i pressed record that oh my god it makes sense I was, it was red light and i'm wearing red now anyways i'm wearing red theme was red light and i was wearing a red thong red star sparkly nipple pasties and a bedazzled sort of bralette and white boots the high boots i was hot i was sexy and it was a great night so it was slightly bigger than my first party and it was actually in partnership with Le Boudoir, which is like, a, which is at their venue. And they also have like a separate sort of membership sort of thing. I didn't actually know it was in partnership with the, the, that other, the other group um, until I got there. And you could definitely tell that there were two different types of people there. There was the Le Boudoir women and the Skirt Club women. And yeah, you could tell the difference. But um, I still had a good time. I still I still had a really good time. It was really loads of fun. The venue, oh my God, the venue was amazing. They had so many play spaces. They had like a big, massive room that people could just watch you. Love that. And they had like smaller um, spaces that were like little scenes. There was a desk. You could uh, reenact a sexy secretary scene if you wanted to. And then they had like a terrace where you could overlook the dance floor and see what's happening there was a, a pole performance as well which is really cool there was a there was a dance floor but i feel like the dance floor is more like a mingle space people were talking for most of the night and there wasn't really much dancing happening which i didn't mean which i'm a little bit upset about because i would lo i would have loved to dance because the music was decent <laughs> it had its ups and lows but yeah that was that was pretty cool as well Whilst I felt super, super safe in the smaller intimate party because there was less of us and it was sort of managed by Seren and the hostess, in this bigger party, there was outside staff and it was staff that was managed by Le Boudoir. So there was men and women there. And we were reassured that, you know, everyone had seen, the staff had seen everything, you know, it wasn't their first time working there. A friend of mine that I actually made on the night, she had a really gross experience where one of the male bartenders had said something very inappropriate to her you know saying that he wanted her and you know it was just very contradictory and contradictory to the whole point of the night which was you know to enjoy um our female sexuality and our desires without the male gaze and yet there was a staff member who was clearly male gazing you know that's what the fuck um to their credit skirt club handled it really skirt club handled it really well they talked to Le Boudoir and addressed it and I'm glad that they didn't just sweep it under the rug. They handled it in a professional way. But of course, you know, they left like a horrible sort of taste in our mouths because, you know, even though they were saying that the men were used to this sort of thing and my friend experienced that, I also, when I was walking around, I was like very scantily dressed. I was wearing a thong and like barely anything covering me. I was getting a lot of reassurances from the male staff that, you know, this is we've seen it all blah, blah blah but it was still slightly uncomfortable i don't know i feel like i feel like in female only spaces female, female non-binary spaces i feel like the staff should also be women as well because yeah you can say that the they've seen everything it's still slightly uncomfortable you know especially because they have free free roaming all over the place they were in the playroom of course taking up glasses and everything but it's just yeah, I definitely feel like that was a misstep. I, I do think that the staff should have been all women. Like the one that I was working on when I first heard about Skirt Club. I think that would have been more appropriate and I would have definitely made all of us kind of feel safe, safer. And it we, that would have avoided that interaction with the friend that I made on the night as well. 
I, I'm not sure whether that'll be the same at all the different events they have because I've only been to two. Actually, I've been at two, worked at one, so that's three. I'm hoping that at other larger events they have just mostly female staff that would make it a lot better in my opinion. Let's do a quick wrap up of this video. Pricing wise I think it's fairly moderate but it's important to remember that it's, mem it's a membership sort of, uh, it's a membership party, you have to have membership and then you have to pay for um, the tickets on top of that so it can add up but I feel like if you plan ahead it can work out a lot better. Um, and then also certain events it's free flowing drinks which makes the ticket price a bit more bearable, in my opinion. <laughs> Safety-wise, mostly good, but it, depending on the venue and the staff working there, it can be a bit hit and miss. Extracurriculars, top-notch. They do boozy brunches, they do workshops, they do big parties, small parties. They do global parties, they're international, baby. You could even go to a party in Miami, New York. Where else? There's other places in Europe. Basically, you're not limited to London, which I think is really cool. I would love to go to a play party international and that's definitely my list to do maybe not this year it's just not in my budget venues change depending on the event so far i've loved every single venue i've been to and i think they do a really good job in welcoming people and making everyone feel just really comfortable i i personally just love seren sins and she's at most if not all of the london events she definitely made the experience so much better because she's just so friendly you can just tell she loves what she does and that just makes the atmosphere and the experience so much better all right that's it from me my lovelies if you've ever been to skirt club let me know in the comments what your experience was like or if you'd like to go let me know because we might end up at the same party i'm happy to answer any sort of questions you might have in the comments about any other female only parties because this is the first of many i've actually been to one night parties as well which is also a female non-binary focused that video will be coming up very soon as well i think those are the only two femme only play parties specifically i know there are a lot of um femme queer raves but those aren't play parties remember i'm a tester not just a regular part not just a regular party tester i'm a play party tester so i'm talking about play parties only oh before i forget <laughs> let me go get my cat <laughs> come on they want to say hi this is my little pussy cat zora okay now oh oh she's camera shy guys she's camera shy come here come <gasps> stop licking yourself we have company there she is there's my little kitty cat. Say hi. <laughs> She's cute like her mommy. Come kitty cat. Say bye. Say bye. Bye. See you next time.